Hi guys, it's Rhiannon. Today I'm going to show you a quick art tutorial in Inkscape. We're going to go over some of the useful tips for tracing graphics and combining them into a design that we'll laser engrave in an upcoming video. I had this idea to combine a bunch of different Japanese stamps into one design. So I started by finding several stamps online and importing them into Inkscape. Once they were in, I began tracing the images to turn them into vectors. To do this, just right click on your image and select Trace Bitmap. For me, the trace options show up in the right sidebar. In there, you can adjust the settings, but the main one I used is the threshold. If you set it too high, the trace picks up shadows and even slight discolorations. If it's too low, it leaves out important details, so it's really about finding the right balance for your image. Once it looks good, hit Apply, and you'll have a vector version ready to work with. At that point, I delete the original image and move on to the next one. It's okay if the traces aren't perfect, since I still want them to look textured like real stamps. I just went through each stamp tracing and resizing as needed. For the shrine stamp, things got a little tricky. I liked the design, but I couldn't get a single trace that captured both the mountain details and the water without the bottom turning into a big dark blob. So instead I made two traces, one lighter trace for the foreground details and one darker trace for the background. I changed the colors of the background version so I could see what I was doing more clearly, then lined them up on top of each other. From there I made sure I was on the correct path in my layers, in this case path 9, and used the eraser tool to remove parts I didn't want. I was moving pretty quickly so I used Ctrl Z a few times to undo mistakes. The annoying part is that every time you undo, it deselects the layer, so you have to reselect it before continuing. If you don't, you risk erasing everything at once. Not the end of the world, but definitely frustrating. I toggled the color between black and blue to check how the layers looked as I erased details. You can also resize the eraser brush for finer adjustments. Once I was happy with the result, I selected both layers, went to Path, and used Union to combine them. After finishing all the stamp traces, I created a rectangle to represent the surface I'll be engraving on. I set its size to match the actual object in millimeters. You can either type MM directly into the size box or just pick it from the dropdown. Then I changed the rectangle's color, moved its layer down so the vectors would sit on top, and started resizing and arranging the stamps into the layout I wanted. Once I had my design, I needed to crop it so the laser wouldn't engrave the extra areas. To do this, I grouped all the stamp paths together, leaving the rectangle out of the group, and selected all the paths. Then I went to Path and Combine. Then with the combined group and the rectangle both selected, I went back up to Path and chose Intersection. And that's it, your design is ready. Just export it as an SVG and pull it into Lightburn for engraving. Thanks for watching and I hope this gave you a few new tips for using Inkscape to create designs for laser engraving. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like and don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss the next one. And if you really like this, consider joining the Laser Master Academy. It's the number one way to support the channel. That's all for now and we'll see you in the next one.